For this media arts project, I will be talking about one of my favorite albums of last year, Manchester Orchestra's The Million Masks of God. Let's get into the track list. Inaudible is an absolutely stunning opener. Every single thing about it is beautiful. The pianos, the drums, those heavenly synths, and those shimmering background noises. It's all very emotionally potent and just lovely in every way. And it transitions perfectly into Angel of Death. This song is one of the three songs on this album that I would actually call a masterpiece. The tense guitar melody never lets you go, the production and aesthetics are amazing, the vibes are on point, and every time that chorus hits, it's nothing short of transcendent. The song's ghostly outro serves as a perfect cherry on top for this truly epic experience of a song. Keel Timing is a very dynamic track. The beat is great, it has an alluring atmosphere, and the vocals keep you constantly engaged. And just as it might start to get boring, it shakes things up with this verse that's heavily reverbed, as well as this one verse whose deep bass and whispered vocals are almost reminiscent of Billie Eilish. And it all leads to an amazingly explosive finale. Great song all around. Bedhead was the lead single from this album. I was in love with it then, and I still am now. This track is absolutely stunning. That synthetic drum loop sounds amazing, the real drums sound amazing, the vocals are engaging, and that ghostly synth is just so harrowing and cool. This song's pacing is absolutely relentless. It's impossible for this song to lose your attention, especially in the bridge, which is honestly one of my favorite bridges in all of music. This song also marks the first example of callbacks on the album. Many of this song's lyrics, as well as parts of its vocal melody, were also present in keel timing. So after this absolutely electrifying moment in the track list, we come to... I initially had a clever transition there, but that original footage corrupted, so I have to re-record it here. Annie is okay. Like every other song here, I still love its aesthetic, but it ultimately feels pretty uneventful and like you wouldn't really miss anything by skipping it. Everything this song does, a different song here does better. But it's still very well performed, has a decently moving bridge, and it's a great sort of middle ground transitional moment between the high energy of Bedhead and the very mellow and quiet nature of the next track. Annie also contains some lyrical and melodic callbacks to Angel of Death, so that's cool. Telepath is a very moving and heartfelt acoustic ballad that I used to find kind of boring, but I've really come to love since the album's release. It's an utterly perfect display of beauty and simplicity, and probably the best acoustic track to ever come from this band. The chorus of Let It Storm has this magnificent sweeping beauty to it. I love the rolling drums and the quiet keys, but I feel like maybe that the scuzzy guitar near the end wasn't needed. It's still a great track though, definitely one of the album's best vocal performances and lyrical moments. Dinosaur starts off with this awesome, really well produced, unique synthetic drum beat, but it gets pretty old after a while. It's way too repetitive. Thankfully, the song concludes very well with an explosive climax that gives us by far the heaviest moment on the album as well as one more beautifully done verse at the very end. This is yet another track that melodically and lyrically calls back to Keel Timing, so that's cool. But in the end, I just wish that this track was more emotionally compelling. Obstacle is simply enchanting. I am deeply in love with the main vocal line on this track. It's just so fascinatingly whimsical, like a Disney movie, but infinitely better. The acoustic guitars sound wonderful, the drums are beautiful, the song's build is so natural and hype-inducing that you'd swear it's Coldplay, and the finale is genuinely euphoric. While I have different favorites nowadays, Obstacle was definitely my favorite when this album first came out. So I have nothing at all specific to say about the penultimate track way back, but it's still a really good song. And then you have this album's closing track, The Internet, which has definitely become my favorite track from the whole project. It has a wonderfully paced slow build all throughout. It perfectly represents both sides of the album, both the loud and the quiet. And the song's climax just makes me feel this utterly indescribable emotion that only the very best music can get out of me. I love this song a lot. Definitely one of my favorite tracks from 2021. Top five even. On the whole, The Million Masks of God feels like a natural progression of the band's previous album. It has the same spaced out and grandiose atmosphere, but things are a lot more electronic and exciting this time around. This album serves as one of the best examples I've ever encountered of a rock band starting to heavily incorporate synthetic elements. It feels more modern and sleek, but the band doesn't lose their soul in the midst of it all. This album's aesthetic is very well balanced. Almost all of these tracks lead into each other sonically, which is always greatly appreciated. It gives the album this seamless flow that always keeps you engaged. Million Masks has a very welcome amount of variety as well. Some songs are more throttling or loud in their presentation, some are more even or just great to vibe to, 
and some will present you with soundscapes that you could easily fall asleep to, and I mean that in an exclusively good way. And the fact that all of these sounds fit together so naturally is truly an achievement in my book. I don't think I can say enough good things about this album. It's not flawless, as it does have one or two lulls in the track list, but I still really, really love it, and it was, and it's one of my favorite projects of 2021. Best songs would be The Internet, Bedhead, and Angel of Death. Weakest songs would be Annie and Dinosaur, even though they are still really good. As for a grade, I'd give the album a steep decent to strong 9 out of 10.